Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of 165 Media where I show you how I put together this composite photo using a 1950 Chevy 3100. Uh, the equipment I used was a Sony a7 III. The flash that you see here is a uh, Flashpoint uh, Explorer 600 uh, with high speed sync and then the big uh, rapid box from Westcott and that one is the Okta XXL and that's about a 48 inch um, box so as you can see here I'm moving around the the box and so what I'm doing is since I only have one uh, large flash I have to uh, take a photo and then expose it how I want it and then move the flash to a different location and um, in the end you know I go ahead and put all the photos together so like you're seeing here I'm lighting the background lighting the front of the truck in one photo and then I light the other side of the background and the other side of the truck so most automotive photographers you know they have the nice setups where they have the full building they can drive into with a nice solid white background um, or if you do this a lot more you do have about two or three of those lights so you can just take this shot that you saw at the beginning uh, just in one photo which of course makes everything a lot easier because you take the photo do a simple edit and then you're you're done but you know when you're starting out you, you got to figure out a way how to do this by yourself with just um, one flash so right here I'm going through the, you know I took a probably about a good um, 20 30 shots trying to figure out what I liked where I liked the lighting and um, here you're seeing the the top five that I used to make the photo and as I cycle through this you'll see that um, I went ahead and did the background uh, side right background side two uh, lit the front half of the truck the front fender the door uh, the other one did the bed of the truck and then the other one did the front uh, grill of the truck so that way I had a nice balance of everything together So right here you're seeing how I'm only adjusting the lighting in Lightroom with the five photos. I'm not adjusting any of the colors. Um, I have noticed that you know in the background parts I have started um, with other photos just messing with the uh, the color only. So depending what you took a photo of, you know cityscape, streets. Uh, in this case, the beautiful mural done back here. Um, I didn't do it in this one, but on other ones I did, I, I mess with the color a little bit, but only for the background, not for the truck itself. But mainly I just messed with the actual uh, lighting. So once you have everything how you like it, uh, you actually go to, you actually select all of them, uh, do edit in, and at the bottom it says open as layers in Photoshop. So that's how you're going to make the second half of this magic happen. And once you see them in Photoshop on the right side, you see that you got all five photos that you liked and, and edited in Lightroom on the right side. And to make your life easier, you can um, name them because uh, if you do this and you do have like a lot more photos in there, or if you're doing something way more advanced, you're gonna want to make sure you have them all named because you're gonna start forgetting which uh, which one is which. Also here, you have to build it kind of like a puzzle. So I'm starting with the background first, so I have that nice and set up. Uh, that's why you see me moving the images uh, because the top image is the the one that you're seeing first, and then 
the image right underneath it is the next one you're going to see. So I'm naming everything right now. That way everything works and I know where it is. But the main thing is, you know, you got to kind of work your way down. So first I'm going to start with the background, making sure that's nice and neat. And that way I can go ahead and start working on the, the truck itself, which you'll see here right now. So the next thing I'm going to show you is called the like a layer mask. So on the bottom, there's a small square, and you see it right there popped up. And what it does is it is using the the paintbrush and the simple colors of black and white. When you paint like anything else, uh, it starts revealing the layer underneath that layer. So you can see why I had to put everything in order because I'm about to start painting right now and you're going to start seeing, seeing the, the background from photo number two coming through which is the photo I took lighting the right side of that wall and you see how it's coming through. Uh, right now I'm painting the color black on that mask. and and see how you saw that little dark part come out that's because I'm revealing the um, again this the photo underneath this one and that side of the photo was dark so the cool part is you just flip the color over to white repaint over it and it you know puts back the top photo that you're seeing so now you're seeing Again, I'm trying to get as much as I can on there. Like you saw in the original photo, the flash was in the shot. And I already knew that I was going to take out the flash using this method. But one thing you can remember too, which, you know, I, I had it in mind, but, you know, I didn't execute it that well, was the fact that when you have like an elaborate elaborate background like this where you know it's a unique piece of art it's a lot harder to clean up afterwards if this was a solid brick wall you know you can get away with it because you know it's a standard brick wall but in these situations it's a little bit more difficult so I use the layer mask to try to get rid of it and darken it and when you see the original photo, if you saw it on Instagram, if you see it on anything else, you're not really even going to notice that was there. But now that you see the video, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. But, you know, this is also why, too, you have to have a lot of practice in it because, you know, the first time I ever did this, it um, I was still trying to figure it out. But now when I shot this one at this very unique location kind of like a one-shot deal, um, I was able to already build what I was going to do in my head. I already knew I was going to put the photo together, together like this because I didn't have multiple flashes, just the one. And, um, you know, in the end of it, I am still very happy with the photo, how it came out. Uh, the owner of the truck was really ecstatic with the photo. He was really, you know, shocked with it. And... Um, you know he loves his truck and you know there's a lot of people that love the truck too so they were really happy to see the the photo once it was done now you can see using that layer mask again now I'm painting white because I'm trying to put back the the first photo a little bit um, I got most of it gone you can still see a hard edge there so I'm trying to um, make the paintbrush not as hard of an edge so I can kind of feather it away so so it kind of looks like a big dark shadow right there uh, again for the situation yeah it works but this is also why it's important too because now for next time I know I gotta pull that flash back a lot more um, or take a close photo so I have it lit up and then do another one with the flash pulled all the way back maybe with a little bit more power so there's probably an easier way to do this, but um, this is just how I do it. 
Once I'm happy with uh, the photo one and photo two merging together, I just go on the side and highlight both of those photos, uh, right click and click uh, merge layers. So it combines them together and I move on to the next one. So now you see this layer. So now the top layer is the background that's all nice and done. The photo underneath it is the rear half of the truck with the bed. So now that I'm painting black, I'm revealing the photo underneath this one, which is what you're seeing here. It has the truck bed lit up and the floor is lit up a little bit. And I just go ahead and again, start painting that in to reveal what's underneath there until I like it. And the other thing too you have to remember is uh, this is your art. Photo Photography is art and you get to make whatever you want of it. I mean, if you wanted to paint the truck purple and, you know, or make this photo black and white, that's up to you. And you're going to have people that are going to like it and you're going to have people that are going to hate it. But in the end of it, as long as you're really happy with it, that's the most important thing. And that's what's going to make people drawn towards you and however you shoot. Because there's probably people that will see this photo and say, I would really like something similar to that with my vehicle. And there's some people that are going to see it and it's not going to work. At the end of the video, I'll show you a, a photo I took with um, with my car in front of the same background. And honestly, I'm not that happy with it. The The truck with all its curves and its um, just the look of it itself just for some reason really fit here. But my car with a modern car it just really didn't have the same pop, um, you know, for me. Sure, I was happy that I got to shoot the photo and, you know, mess with it too, but uh, I just noticed it just didn't have the same feeling that this one got out of me. But, you know, again, glad I got to take at least a couple photos of my car there. So, again, continuing here, we're just the painting in the parts that were lit up. And, you know, you're going to have to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of make sure that you're cleaning up that edge because the last thing you want too is it to have that highlighted edge around there so it looks more like a composite photo um, you know that that's also what kind of throws me off too when I see some of the photos done where there's like a it's a dark background but the truck is or the vehicle is really highlighted around it and you know what was done and when you're trying to do it really well just try try to get zoom in a little bit and get in those little edges and and clean that up so now I did the same pattern as you look on the right side that the uh, layers are down to just two and now I'm working on the uh, the last part here which is just the grill and um, since he does have some nice uh, pinstriping done, uh, again, all by hand, I want that to show up a little bit. So by revealing the, um, the bottom layer, which had the nice flash on there, you can see the pinstriping a lot better, which again, with a truck like this, you got to show all the little, you know, nice art elements on there as well, especially with this being shot at a in the art district of downtown LA, you know, you know, I'm just going with the theme. So, and then again, if you look on the right, since we only have two layers, I just been merging everything. Once I was happy with it, I merged it down to the next one and then did the revealing of it and, you know, went down to the next layer. And, you know, if you know an easier way to do that part, hey, I'm all for learning as well. Um, you know, let me know in the comments because, um, if there's a way to speed that up, if not, you know, it works. But of course, sometimes it's harder to go back once you've already merged everything. Um, so that would be my only um, issue with it. So again, if you're in case you're wondering, the truck is a 1950s 
Chevy 3100 and as you could see the um, if you're you know into cars and trucks uh, it is bagged and it has had some uh, metal work done so it can tuck down uh, but the um, it's a straight six cylinder but you know it rides pretty nice I've got to drive in it before uh, but it's always a showstopper every time you know it's driving around and now that you see I've merged all the layers now it's just one layer so now I'm going into the the settings and I'm trying to just do some final adjustments with the the lighting with the uh, color balance to make sure it looks good that way I can get that final last you know dr dramatic effect make sure also too when you're taking these photos that you are shooting them in raw that way when you are trying to correct the colors in uh, Lightroom you can you can make sure to have that option to draw back some of those um, dark areas because um, if you shoot it with JPEG I mean if that's all you got hey do it but if you have the option when you're doing stuff like this try to have the raw files it makes your life a whole lot easier um, in case you did shoot it a little too light you do have that option to bring it back so the last thing I'm trying to do here is to crop it because you know I'm trying to get rid of that uh, area that I messed up and put the flash in the background on the right hand side so I'm trying to just size this up correctly as best I can but you know I'm trying not to cut off the um, the top of it because again this is a beautiful piece of art and this is really what helps make the photo unique than you know taking it on a, a street somewhere so I, I gotta include that even though the dimensions are gonna be a little bit off compared to a normal photo you know once this goes most of the time all this stuff's gonna just go online Instagram you'll be able to see it perfectly fine if you print it out then yeah you'll have to do a little bit more editing um, to figure out how to properly place it on a mat or a 8x10 but you know it's a good problem to have when you're printing them out because you want to you know give it to the client or whoever but uh, again here's a photo of my car um, that I put in here just so you could see the difference in the background and um, again I, I don't mind it it's not bad but you know for me it just really didn't have the same pop as compared to the uh, the pickup truck so I appreciate you watching the video up to this far uh, if you have any questions uh, you know I hope I didn't confuse you 20 times more the uh, composite again we're just putting together uh, multiple photos to make one photo you might see um, extreme examples of it when you see like the uh, the ones where like a little kid is reading a book about the ocean and they're looking out their bedroom window but in the bedroom window it's the ocean you know you see a whale or fish swimming in it you know those are extreme composites putting together multiple photos to make one but in this case you know we're just uh, doing some lighting to make the truck come out exactly how we wanted it but uh, again if you have any questions or any other tips for me that you saw that might even speed up the process again feel free to drop me a line and um, you know I love shooting this stuff so there'll be some more videos of this in the future um, you can follow me at 165 media that's on um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well and um, the 165 media on Instagram has all the links to my other ones which is nuts and wrenches and motor car now and then also what I do on uh, my main living which is a canine catcher so um, again check those out if you have any interest in the cars or animal world and uh, we'll see you on the next video i appreciate it thanks